tone color seems like this incredibly mystical thing and in some ways it is but in other ways it's really practical and actually not that difficult to understand. So today we are diving into the wonderful world of tone color. Hi everybody, my name is Tatiana and this is The Flute Practice, a space that is aimed at helping you reach your potential. And we usually have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Tone color, tone color, tone color, what is it even? I think it really helps here to use another word for tone color, which is timbre or timbre in French. I, I don't know if that's how you say it. My French is really bad. But basically this word describes more than just kind of a color of sound. It kind of describes a quality of sound as well. In fact, every instrument has a very distinctive and different tone color. So a flute will sound very different to a clarinet, to a piano, to a violin. Every player, every flautist has also got their own unique sound and color of sound. And then even more specific, within each of those individual sounds, there is a range of different color possibilities and a kind of palette of colors that the player can make use of. But these different colors need to be practiced and they need to be learned. They don't just happen automatically. At the end of this video, I want to tell you guys about an amazing workshop involving this book that we are running on Patreon at the moment. So stay tuned for that really exciting opportunity to take your playing to the next level. Okay, so yeah, all good and well to understand what tone color is, but how do we do this on the flute? There are a couple of things involved in creating tone color on the flute. We look at the air speed and air direction, so how fast or slow the air is and how high or low that air stream is. We look at the shape and the size of the embouchure, so how open or closed the lips are and how tight or loose forward or backwards those lips are. We're also going to look at the cavity of the mouth, how much space there is in the mouth or how little space or the shape of the mouth in general is going to really affect the color of the sound. I go as far as to say that the whole body gets involved in creating the color of the sound. And our whole body is like a big speaker. It's part of our resonance room. So when we're playing, the sky is very much involved in our sound. Now, the first thing to note is that they are kind different opinions about tone color and when dealing with this you're going to hear a lot of stuff and that's just because I think everybody does experience it slightly differently and some people it's not so much that they actually know what they're doing kind of mentally they're more just kind of feeling and reacting out of that feeling. As I said this is where it starts to get like a little bit wishy-washy but we are keeping it super practical today so don't stress. Trevor Y speaks about two main kind of colors of sound, a kind of yellowy, thinner, more airy sound and a more purple, darker, richer sound. Now to get that kind of more airy, thin, yellowy sound, we want to think more forward with the lips and the jaw. We want to raise that airstream. We want to perhaps think a little bit more airspeed, but more than any of that, I think kind of smaller cavity in the mouth, a little bit more oo or e sound in the mouth while I'm playing. And we get this kind of a sound. It's kind of a beautiful gentle sound. And here you can mess around with the dynamics in that sound. So you could make a softer sound like that, maybe a louder sound like that, always trying to keep that kind of yellowish color. Be careful of the intonation because when we start going into this more yellow sound, it tends to be on the sharper side of things. And that's exactly the opposite for that more purple sound. So the purple sound, we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're going to think more of a whole opening in the mouth, drop that lower jaw back and down a bit, we're going to be blowing that air really down into the flute and we really want to think open with the whole body. So that purple sound tends to want to really go flat and we have to be careful to control the pitch. So never ever change the color at the expense of the pitch. Playing in tune is still your number one goal. Because if you're out of tune, the only color people are going to be hearing is ugly. I'm serious. So play around with this. You may want to just raise the airstream slightly if the pitch is really going down. Another nice little trick is to make sure that you're not rolling in and maybe even roll out a tiny bit to help control that pitch. 
Trevor White does warn us against just rolling in the flute for that purple sound. It does create that kind of a sound, but it really is going to go flat. So we will get... Kind of get like a dull stunted sound. He has lovely exercises in his book to kind of explore these possibilities and I encourage you to go and check them out. But the question we tend to ask ourselves is like what about all the other colors right? Like what about green and red and blue? Like for example what color do you think this is? Put down in a comment below what color you think that is. Or what about this color? Hear any difference? And he does say that these are really the extremes of colors, but that there are a whole spectrum of other colors in that. And one of the tips that I have is to play around with these different parameters. So the airspeed, the air direction, the cavity in the mouth and the throat, and the feeling of the whole body to try and find some of those other tone colors. There is so much nuance here in terms of color of sound. But I think when we start to understand the kind of parameters around color, we know what our tools are and how we can start exploring it. Catherine Kemmler had a really interesting approach to this. She speaks about four different tone colors. She speaks about a huey sound and an edgy sound. So those are kind of similar to your yellow sound and your purple sound, except that the huey sound is kind of that sort of more ethereal color, whereas the edgy sound is more kind of a strong color. So we get this kind of a thing. is more of that Huey sound, which is really that airstream lifted more forward with the lips, the mouth, closing the mouth a bit. And then the edgy sound. Getting that where we're dropping that airstream. For the edgy sound, I'm even tightening a little bit the corners to just get a little bit more bite in the sound. But added to this edgy sound and Huey sound, she adds vibrato and no vibrato. So for example, you can have a Huey sound with vibrato. a Huey sound without vibrato. You get an edgy sound with vibrato and an edgy sound without vibrato. This is very useful and I think it's a useful kind of base point to start exploring tone colors with as well. One of my favorite ways of thinking about tone color is to think about different shapes in the mouth and specifically to think about kind of different vowel sounds in the mouth. I love this because it's practical but it gives you a lot to play with. So for example I'm going to start with an ah. I'm going to think of an ah kind of a sound. Now I'm going to think of an e kind of a sound. Now I'm going to think of an o kind of a sound or quite flat. Now I'm going to think of an ooh kind of a sound. What I like about that approach is I get to play with the shape of the, my mouth and my tongue because my tongue is really coming into this a little bit of changing the shape within that mouth while at the same time I can still control the intonation with my lips. Now the important thing to understand with all of this is how connected intonation and color of sound are. They are so connected. We've already spoken about how, you know, intonation can be affected if you change the color of the sound and how you've got to be very careful not to play out of tune. But sometimes it's also helpful when we're trying to tune something, when we're really just struggling with intonation, to think rather of a color of sound than about actual pitch. A nice example of this would be your C sharp. So if I just play the C sharp as is without adjusting anything, you'll actually hear it has quite a bright yellow or huey kind of a sound. So to fix the pitch of it, to make it less sharp, because it is really sharp, I can just think a little bit darker, a little bit more edgy and a little bit more purple. And voila, that note's intonation has been fixed. So it's a very useful tool for intonation. I believe having a powerful imagination is huge. And so my last approach is going to be to really just imagine that color of sound. Really imagine it, 
hold on to it and then just go for it. So I'm going to imagine the color. What color was that? I think if you have been playing around with the different parameters that could change the sound and then you do that exercise, I think you can really have a lot of success with it. But I think you'll also be amazed by what you can do without really knowing what you're doing. I'm amazed how my body scrambles to do what my brain is telling it to do. I'm also amazed how it doesn't sometimes, but that's another video topic on its own. Okay guys, I promised to tell you guys a little bit about this workshop coming up. We have just started, so it's a great time to get involved in this workshop. It is an eight week practice series on Patreon with weekly videos, clear practice plans and, and, and. Guys, I'm gonna link you to a video that explains a bit more about this. It is such a great opportunity to really dive into your practicing and take it to the next level. And there is just a super amazing community of people there. So if you wanna be a part of a big flute family, then join. Just $2 and you have access to this course. But while you're there, you may as well check out some of the other really cool rewards because there are some really cool rewards. Happy practicing, wonderful friends. Find some beautiful colors and I will see you next time.